Good evening, everyone. It's lovely to have you join with us tonight. My name is Tom. I'm the minister of Earls Hall Baptist Church. And tonight is our evening devotion. As a church, we've got a number of different things that we're trying to do to sort of stick together and allow each other to be seen and involved. And John Stanton is organising a 10,000 Reasons song in which we can all get involved. Uh, whether you've got a good voice or not, there is a way for you to get involved and there are some detailed uh, explanations of how that's going to work that's going to come out in the next week. When you do get that information, please do read through uh, all that John has said and try to record in the way that he has suggested. It would be really exciting to be part of that. I've also invited you to share a wave, uh, just a photo, of you saying hello uh, that I can then add into a larger collection of waves. I've got about 35 I think so far but I'd like quite a lot more if I can and I will add those in and make a video montage of us all waving to each other. Just a good way to encourage each other just now. I've certainly enjoyed receiving all the pictures of the smiling people waving at me. This coming Sunday, Andy Smith, our elder, is going to be uh, taking the service. So we look forward to that. I think the service is going to be pre-recorded for this coming Sunday, but we're back to live the following Sunday. But it'll still be good to tune in at half past 10 on Sunday morning. Tomorrow night, we've got our usual Thursday evening Zoom, time to chat and then a time to pray together at the end. They've been really good over the last few weeks and really encouraging and please do if you receive that invitation, please do join us in that. Following the announcement yesterday from Boris Johnson and changes to legislation around the lockdown, we look like we're getting a little bit closer to being able to open the church building in some ways, but still with some significant restrictions upon how and when we do that. We don't have any clarification on this yet. Uh, so please don't think that when we get to the 4th of July, suddenly everything's going to change. We don't know what the legislation is going to be. And in fact, it's not properly been written out as guidelines yet. Those aren't likely to arrive even for another 24 or 48 hours. And after that, there's got to be a process of looking at different things. We are looking at a risk assessment for the building and for how we can use the building in the future for uh, well, all the usual sorts of things that we may do, but what the safe way to do that is. But we are not there yet. We can't open the building at the moment. When we know more, we will certainly let you know. I've also been asking over the last few weeks for your favorite verses. Uh, if you've got a favorite Bible verse or a verse that's been an encouragement to you over the period of uh, coronavirus, please do send that to me. You can send me a picture that you've painted and take a picture of it or uh, an email with just the, the word. Send it to minister at earlshall.com and I'll add it to the wall. Tonight we've got two new ones. One is from Paul Schofield and the other is from Sharon Schofield. Let me read the first one. This is Philippians 4, 6 to 7. It's just down here. This is from Paul. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition and thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And the second one is from Sharon. Uh, this is 2 Samuel 22, verses 2 and 3, and it's just here. The Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and my strength of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge and my saviour. From violent men you save me. So these are good words for us to begin with. So let's pray with these verses in mind. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we can meet together in this way over uh, the internet. We thank you that we are able to pray together, that even though we aren't gathered physically together by your spirit, we are able to be united. I thank you for these words from Philippians. Do not be anxious about anything. 
Lord, at this time with the, the pandemic around the world, it is very easy to become anxious. And so we want to pray with thanksgiving that you, Lord Jesus, would continue to have sovereign rule over this world that you created. We pray, Lord Jesus, that coronavirus would come to an end and that you would help us to endure in this time. And we thank you too, Lord God, that you are our rock, our fortress and our deliverer, our God in whom we take refuge, our shield. You are our protector and our hiding place and we are so grateful to that, Lord God. Lord Jesus, we pray that you'd bless the rest of our time together and each one of us. Amen. You can maybe hear some fans. That's the fans on my computer. I'm in the church building in the broom cupboard and it is very hot in here. I have a little bit of a glow. I'm not sure that that's just the sunshine. Tonight we are going to be thinking together about each other. Specifically, to help us do this, we're going to use the first few verses of Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. Philippians 1 verses 3 to 6. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Fantastic words. Paul, as he writes this letter with Timothy, they remember the church in Philippi with great fondness. They have an affectionate memory. It's intimated by their prayers of joy for them. Paul says that he has prayers of joy for this fellowship of believers because they had shared with him in telling people the gospel, the good news of forgiveness of sins in Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection. Paul is sure that that which God began to do in the church, he will continue to do, that God will complete his good work in them. These are good opening words, aren't they? Paul is missing this church. He is missing them to the extent that he goes to the effort of writing to them. He deeply misses them. I miss you. It's been a while since we've been able to meet together in the way that we would understand meeting together. We've been meeting online for over three months now. But we long to be able to meet each other and spend time with each other, don't we? Absence from each other can do several things to us. We can remember well and look back fondly, can't we? We can recall with fondness that which we are part of, though we are apart. And that's something that Paul is certainly doing in this letter with the help of Timothy. We can also miss that which we are part of, though currently at this strange and isolated remove. Or we can start to think negatively of what we are part of, allow small failings or differences in thought to drive some sort of mental and spiritual wedge between us. We can choose to think well or we can choose to think ill. And Paul's thoughts for the Philippians were good. He knew how the church began. He knew how it had continued and it gave him joy. The Philippians is known as the rejoicing letter. And I want to encourage you and encourage me just now to think fondly of each other. And one way to help us do that is to pray for each other. If we pray for the local church, we pray for one another and God can draw to mind things that are going on. Can we pray for the local church that God will help us know a fondness and care in our hearts for those we cannot currently meet with, but those who are our church family? Can we pray for us to have the same fondness for each other that Paul had for the Philippians? 
for I think it's better to think well of each other than to think ill. Paul is able to say a little later in the letter that he has shared in God's grace with the church in Philippi. There's been a real partnership. And as a leader, just one leader in many, many local churches the world over, I would hope that you would remember fondly that we too share in God's grace. We do that locally here as a church in South End, but we do that locally in many places all over the world. So all over the world we share in God's grace. So can we pray trusting to God's grace for one another? Can we pray with fondness of heart for all that God has done, all that he continues to do, and all that he will do in us by his Spirit? Does that give you hope today? Because it gives me hope today. And that fact, let me invite you to pray with me just now. The words are going to come up on the screen. I'm just going to read them through before we, we pray them. Let me read these out loud and then we'll pray them. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your church. We thank you for the local church we are part of, our church family. We thank you that we seek to share the gospel, the truth of your salvation through forgiveness of sin by your death and resurrection. We have hope that you will carry on to completion the good work that you have begun in us. Help us to remember each other with fondness. Help us to pray lovingly for each other. Lord Jesus, we thank you for each other and for all you are doing in us and in the wider world. Amen. That's our prayer. I've read it through quite quickly, but you have a flavor for it. Do you want to remember each other fondly? Then let's pray for each other. Let's pray these words that are on the screen. Pray them with me. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your church. We thank you for the local church we are part of, our church family. We thank you that we seek to share the gospel, the truth of your salvation through forgiveness of sin by your death and resurrection. We have hope that you will carry on to completion the good work that you have begun in us. Help us to remember each other with fondness. Help us to pray lovingly for each other. Lord Jesus, we thank you for each other and for all you are doing in us and in the wider world. Amen. Well, it's been good to share with you this evening. Thank you for praying that prayer. And I trust that as we go forward into whatever the unlockdown uh, situation is in the next few weeks and months, that we will consider each other well, that we will love each other and remember fondly all that God is doing and has been doing and will do in the life of the church. It's been good to see you tonight. I will see you tomorrow. And Andy will see you on Sunday. Good night.